Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, this is just sort of a leisurely spur of the moment video. I'm sitting here sipping coffee in my M. Graham coffee mug and looking at new stuff, exciting new stuff. I really hadn't anticipated doing a video this soon on new products, but when new stuff, important stuff comes up, I gotta, I gotta look at it. I gotta show you guys. So. We're gonna dive right into it. I got my computer here. I, this is very free form. I haven't done a lot of planning on this episode, so a lot of the organization's gonna happen in the edit. We're gonna look first at the Etcher sketchbooks, and these, uh, this is their whole line, I think. I've got their whole line. They were kind enough to send them to me to uh, look at and review. And sketchbooks, especially cotton sketchbooks, are just really fun and exciting to look at. Um, this, these are the Etcher sketchbooks. These are the perfect sketchbooks. Um, I, fr from the beginning, was a little confused about the two lines. They're all cotton, all 100% cotton. The Etcher sketchbook, the perfect sketchbook, the A5 and the A4, and they are a new format. They're a landscape format. We'll look at that in a second. And then the perfect sketchbook signature series. We'll look at that in a minute. This is the classic perfect sketchbook portrait format that Erwin Lee and originally came up with, or one of them. So first of all, I left these in the packaging. I just wanted to talk about this. Uh, they really went the full nine yards on the packaging. And that's actually a practical thing. These are shipped from Hong Kong, shipped internationally all over the world. And one of the things they uh, really wanted to combat and be careful with was contamination and moisture getting to the books. So they put it in this outer sleeve. And this, you know, of course it'll be shipped in a box or a padded envelope. So they put it in this outer sleeve and they put it in this. You can see it came with uh, moisture absorbing silica gel and then shrink wrapped. So, I mean, they've really gone overboard to get these uh, to you in a perfect, clean format. And these are just really, really lovely. So this is the A6. This is their smallest book. Let's just take a closer look. 54 pages, by the way. Now, in here it says 5.9 by 3.8. Excuse me, 5.9 by 3.9. This is a, a, they're not disclosing the brand, but this is a cotton paper and it's cut. But you can see beautiful case binding, sewn binding, bookmark. So make a great travel journal. And I love this. I, I love this fabric cover and their little uh, embroidered llama, which is the Etcher logo. Really cool. And of course the elastic closure. So that's the A6. I've already removed the shrink wrap off of this one. This is the A5. They also have an A4. I don't have the A4, which is a larger one. Uh, same format, 100% cotton, 54 pages. Oh, and by the way, uh, a pocket in the back, expandable pocket. I mean, look at that. It's like a ribbon material, just like uh, you would get with a bookmark. So the A5, uh, their A5 is 8.3 by 5.9 inches in landscape. Same case binding and high quality sewn. These are just high quality sketchbooks like you wouldn't find literally anywhere. But hold on, because it gets better. I have to say, uh, I mean, it just amazes me what they're willing to, to do for the watercolorists. Now this is their perfect sketchbook line. And let's deal with the standard perfect sketchbook first. Same type of packaging, an outer sleeve, an inner sleeve, shrink wrap, landscape format. This is the A5, 8.9 by 5.9. There's 44 pages in this one, a few less pages than the other, but I mean still, good grief. Yeah, you do pay a little more for these, and I am not going to publish prices on here. Uh, I am going to put all the links down in the description, so make sure to check them out and go to Etcher to see what their, their prices currently are. But this had Erwin Lean's oversight and input in how they designed and made these. These are polyurethane covers. Again, a high quality cotton paper. They are not brand specific about this, but there does seem to be a little difference. These, this is a 
whiter paper. This is a creamier paper. Texture looks to be about the same. Beautiful, beautiful sketchbook. And I believe this is Erwin Lean's uh, wonderful artwork on the wraparound band. Let's take a look at the A4. And this is very exciting. Really great size, especially for a landscape artist like me. Another fantastic uh, Erwin Lean painting. 11.4 by 8.3. That's close to uh, US letter size. It's 29 by 21 centimeters. Again, 44 pages, just a bigger version. This is like Christmas. <laughs> Coffee, coffee, coffee. Nice embossing on the back. The perfect sketchbook. Ooh, look at all that painting space. Same high quality stitching, stitch case binding. So nice, nice. And then finally, we have what they're calling the signature series. This is like uh, the ones that Erwin Leon last produced when he was producing them himself through Bind Artisan. And there it is. More of Erwin's uh, lovely artwork. The only difference now in this and his is that you, you now see the Etcher logo. But if you love the, the perfect sketchbook, you should love the fact that Etcher picked these up. I mean, it was just Something I know Erwin wanted to do, but he produced them basically because he couldn't find the sketchbooks he wanted. But now he's found somebody who will produce these. Now this signature series is limited, so these you want to get them now if you ever plan on getting them. They plan to only probably do one drop of these a year. And when they're gone, they're gone. Um, and then you'll have to wait until they decide to do it again. It, it's a major undertaking to produce these, which, as Erwin found out. The difference in these and that, well, number one, it's a B5, which is 6.9 by 9.9. .9. It's portrait. Uh, but it's, it's a name brand Fabriano Artistico paper with the deckled edges and hand-torn edges. In some places hand torn and other places deckled and unless you order a handmade sketchbook online from somebody you just won't find anything like this with a fabriano artistico paper especially if you've ever heard me talk about my my splash surveys i've done a couple surveys in splash splash is the uh, watercolor annual that comes out every year far and away the number one runaway leader in watercolor paper was Arches, as you might expect. Arches just has a recipe for making watercolor paper that no one seems to be able to duplicate. And it's a preference thing. Most of it is cotton watercolor paper. Second to Arches is almost always Fabriano Artistico. So anyway, that's what this book is, Fabriano Artistico. And they order this paper directly from Italy. It's got the uh, Artistico watermark right in there. I personally love that. I know some people don't like to paint over watermarks, but I like to be able to see what the, what the uh, paper is. Anyway, that's the signature series and you need to grab those quick while they're available. Same embossing. They all have the nifty little pockets in the back for travel keepsakes maybe or photos that you want to archive along with the book. I have not filled a perfect sketchbook yet and the first series that he ordered, this is uh, one of the very first of the B5 that uh, Erwin ordered. I got it with my name embossed on it and I've not filled one. I, uh, the problem is is I, I have a habit of buying new sketchbooks of all different brands so I can test them for you guys. So I start a sketchbook get three or four or five pages into it and then before I know it I'm buying a different sketchbook and trying it so I have starts on probably ten different sketchbooks I can honestly say this is still my favorite and you know the choices are that I have tested or haven't tested are dwindling so I'm gonna be coming back to this and doing more work uh, this is some of the work that I've done in it this was Charleston this was uh, 
my first weekend with any of these books, these perfect sketchbooks, and it was just absolute delight painting in them. This was that same weekend. This was a birthday weekend where I went to Charleston and painted on two separate days. This was a winter afternoon. I was looking for something to paint. Went to uh, this uh, Walnut Grove Plantation locally. I uh, got there only about an hour before closing, so I had to sketch something pretty quickly and come back and paint it. Uh, this was a study I did for another piece. I was trying to do some Queen Anne's lace and trying out some masking fluid on this paper. Fabriano Artistico handles masking fluid great. But I just had some questions about how I would handle white flowers over a dark background with grasses. And there's a little bit of gouache in there, but it's mostly watercolor. An afternoon uh, at Jones Gap, there's a video on this. I think this is in a vlog. I can't recall, but this was uh, my vacation two years ago with my wife to see her parents uh, who live in Iowa. And this was a park, local park in Iowa. So that's somewhere in a vlog. Brattonsville, which is a historic site. Uh, this is just a local park. This is Carl Sandberg's home. Uh, you'll, you may remember this episode. Uh, I did these rock formations. That was from my photo, which I actually took in Arizona. That's the Superstition Mountains. This is from the 3030 Direct Watercolor Challenge over a year ago. And a portrait demo I did from a Williamsburg reenactor. Did a video on that so that's as far as I've gotten in this book still my favorite book but I've got tons of sketches and other books that I've started I always come back to this though and there will be more lots more all right if I left something out that you're wanting to know about the sketchbooks uh, please hit me up in the comments with questions and I'll try to answer them if I can that is their range. I do not think these, as of publishing, the time of publishing these videos, or as at the time of making these videos, I don't think the gray ones have been released yet. These have been released. You can go online and order those. This uh, limited uh, edition drop has been released of these. So go online and uh, find out uh, what their pricing situation is. Um, they come in bundles, so you can't buy just one. And that, a lot of that has to do with the cost of international shipping. They pay for the shipping, but the only way that's possible is they have to sell them in bigger bundles. So maybe you could go in with a friend if you only want one. As you might expect, they're not cheap books. That's because uh, they're not made cheap. They're made to be some of the sketch, best sketchbooks you'll ever find. You can also drop uh, a comment on the Etcher site if you have a question for them. But if a question occurs to you right here and you want to leave a comment, I'll try to answer it if I can. I'll put all the links that I can down in the description. So we artists who love cotton paper have some great options now. I mean, some great options. If I want to paint in only cotton sketchbooks from now on, I can now do that. You saw the Strathmore ones that I showed you a few weeks ago. So we're getting some really good options out there. Coffee time. Mmm. Does coffee taste better in an M. Graham coffee mug? Why, I think it might. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. Faber-Castell. Faber-Castell Albert Durer is a name you'll recognize from watercolor pencils probably. They've attached that name to these watercolor markers. It's my favorite watercolor pencil. I don't know yet if I can say that for their markers. I'm not a big marker person in terms of media in general, not having anything to do with the brand. Let me push the laptop out of the way. I don't know if I'm going to need it for this, but just by way of introduction, it is a artist's grade watercolor marker, meaning it's pigmented. You won't find many of those. Uh, most of the watercolor markers, especially the cheap sets that you, cheaper sets that you see, are dye-based. They're intended for crafters or hobbyists. There aren't very many out there that are pigmented for uh, fine artists for light fat or for light fast purposes. Uh, this is one I did way back when my channel was young. I reviewed these, uh, the Winsor Newton watercolor markers. They're fine. I liked them. I thought they worked really well. Uh, watercolor markers just not something that I have fit 
into my workflow on a regular basis. But I think they're neat. I like them. Uh, it's just probably force of habit. I definitely want to do video to demonstrate these. Some notable differences. First of all, let's look at the line. The line is, this is the complete line. If you buy this set, this is the 30 marker set. This is the complete set of 30. Uh, again, I will put links down if you want to go check out the light fastness ratings and check out the specific colors. I won't be swatching them today or doing a painting demo. I'm just, these are first looks at these products. But let's take out a marker and take a look. Just like with the Winsor Newton, there is a brush tip and a bullet tip. Here's the brush tip. And here's the bullet tip. Nothing earth shattering there about what you would expect. This 30 set has two lift out trays. They also have a 20 marker set, a 10 marker set, and a 5 marker set. Now, uh, I don't know yet whether these will be sold as open stock. Let me see if I can answer that question right now. Because I can already see after having looked at these that there are some colors I will use a lot more than others. They're still not showing up on a lot of sites. Uh, they are showing up on Amazon. And I will have uh, affiliate links down below if you want to buy some of these. Let's go to Blick. They usually have everything. Yeah, there they are. Right there on Blick. Um, Alright, let's see what they offer. Ah, open stock. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. So they, or, uh, they offer on Blick already, and that means others will probably follow suit. They offer the four sets, the 5, 10, 20, and 30 set, and then uh, individual open stock markers. That's great news. Makes sense. You know, an artist's quality uh, supply should come open stock. Let's just compare it real quick to the Winsor Newton. It's very, very similar. There's the bullet tip on the Winsor Newton. Almost identical. There's the brush tip. About the same, really. That brush tip was coming out, so I ended up getting orange all over my fingers because I pushed that tip was coming out a little bit. About the same. The only other uh, pigmented watercolor I'm aware of is the Aqua Markers from Letroset. That doesn't mean there aren't others. There well may be. I'm just not aware of them. I really want to give these a good shot though because I love their watercolor pencils so much. I think they would work well together in mixed media. Uh, just some exciting possibilities, you know, run through my head as I think about that. Now, another thing that excited me about these that you did not find uh, with Winsor Newton were the grays. Full set of grays. Uh, you actually have a, an indigo and a black. Indigo is really similar. Their indigo is really similar to a Payne's gray. And then you had two warm grays, a light and a dark, and two cool grays, a light and a dark. That's great for getting in value first and then coming back over it with color. Love that. Because of the, all the landscape I do, I love this gray green here. They call it earth green. So I found that really neat. Just a couple tips uh, to mention. At some point, uh, just like with watercolor pencil, you're probably going to want to palette these. Uh, meaning that you'll, you'll put them on another surface and pick it up with a brush. At some point, you're going to want to do a little of that. It's really difficult to mix and get all the strength, you know, the, the intensity or paleness uh, of the wash just strictly by direct application of the marker. A number of ways you can palette. Upo makes a good palette. It's got enough tooth. It, it, this works really well for watercolor pencil and it also works for uh, watercolor marker. I've tried it. Also, Karen Dosh has a palette. Uh, I used this recently in my graphite, water-soluble graphite video, uh, and I've used it here with watercolor pencil. Back up a little bit. Just scribble it down. Put some water in your brush. You know, and apply your paint. You can mix that way by scribbling down. Even ceramic, you, you would think this would just beat up, but even ceramic palettes make a, a good palletting tool. In fact, one tip is that uh, you can paint a lot of your initial pale washes this way, get the structure of your painting established, and come in uh, with the shadows in the deeper colors directly. And if you paint into wet, you get a paler wash than if you, you draw on dry. In fact, uh, there is an effect. This takes some practice to use. I'll probably get into this more when I do... Uh, demo. Let's say you have a wet area. 
here. If you draw directly into a wet area, it will go soft, but it'll also go lighter. Let's see if I can show you that. You see the light tip now? What's happened is the tip has picked up some of the water and absorbed it. And now anywhere you paint, even on dry paper, it's lighter. Now it comes back. It comes back rather rapidly. If I keep if I keep drawing, you'll see it become more and more intense. But when you first draw into wet water, you get very pale washes. So that's a tip that's worth exploring when you when you use watercolor marker. And then you can just draw very, very pale as if you're drawing with a pastel marker. Then I can go in here and shade and fill. So that's a tip, as is the, uh, the paletting. So there's lots of ways to use watercolor mark. If you put the cap back on there, you know, and you want it to come back to full strength, just put the cap back on there. And, and eventually it'll come back to full strength. Or you can just go on some... You see that just a few minutes and it's already pretty much back to full strength. Most of the line is light fast, either good light fastness or excellent light fastness. Um, but you can go online and the links I'll provide down below. You can go online and look at their ratings a little more closely if you'd like. As with any kind of different media, there are learning curves so you, you have to learn how to use them. I can see watercolor markers being great for florals because of the brilliant colors. Any, you know, bright color type application, they're going to be excellent for. I can also see them working really well for touching up uh, watercolors using maybe regular watercolor. i pull out a sketchbook here. This is from the 3030 Direct Challenge last year. Yeah, so maybe I just want to go in here. This indigo deepen my shadows just a really uh, easy quick way to touch something up of course another one might be a line and wash this is a ballpoint pen illustration i did for inktober last year uh, watercolor markers are tailor-made for line and wash i mean they just they really are so you can come in here and you work out of the dark areas maybe then you pull your color out into light areas that you want to tone. Yeah, so watercolor marker is perfect for, for line work. Instead of carrying a, a whole watercolor set with you, I could see picking maybe a limited palette of three markers, carrying that with you, doing your sketch in either pencil or ink, and then uh, adding a little color. So uh, lots of possibilities. You just have to think and, and experiment. Lots of ways to use it. All right, everyone. I hope that was useful. I hope uh, you enjoyed taking a look at these new products. I look forward to using them. And uh, we will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.